seated, please. You can go ahead and be seated. Wow. How many are just taken up with the holy presence of the Lord? I was thinking that when When New Year's Day falls on a Sunday, as it does this year, it means a lot of different things to different people. Some people are just recovering from last night, New Year's Eve. It's one thing, day of recovery. To others, it's still holiday mode. They could be traveling, they could be resting, they could be in holiday. Some make it all about football from start to finish. It is what it is to a lot of different people, but to us, the church, we get to set our sails anew and let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow on our life and we do a reset and our focus becomes Jesus all over again why Jesus well he's who has captured our soul Sharon and I have been reviewing, listening over, and afresh and anew watching The Chosen. And the writers of that series have captured the way Jesus arrested people. And they could not lose sight of what it was that got their attention. Jesus was their focus. Although they had um, many different ideas of where Jesus was going to take them, at the end of the day, you have to recognize that Jesus captured them. And forever their lives were changed. And for you and I today, you sit here with me in this room, captured by Jesus. You don't know where it's going to take you. And you don't understand all of the journey. But he's arrested your life. And it's called faith, the walk that we're in. We've had the ability to exercise faith for our salvation. We've taken steps of faith when it's come to our decisions in this life. Some major, some minor decisions, but yet, nonetheless, faith has been exercised. This morning, we want to remind ourselves of the moment that Jesus captured our hearts. The Bible uses some words for that experience. One is we're born again. We're converted. We've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We've given our life to Jesus. Those are some ideas that go with that story. Paul, one of our lead apostles, said what you should do is you should remind yourself regularly of that start in life. And the focus needs to be Jesus. And in the book of Corinthians, he talks about taking the elements 
of what is called the Lord's Supper, the Communion, the Eucharist, put whatever title you want on it. But it's an opportunity that we have to once again remind ourselves of what Jesus did for us. First of all, he gave his body as a complete sacrifice. He left heaven and came to the planet. You might be saying, well, what's so bad about that? Well, you haven't been to heaven, so you don't know what Jesus gave up to come here. But he came. He was falsely accused, as a lot of times we are. He was arrested and he died. He sacrificed to be the propitiation for our sins. Big word that means substitute. Where you and I should have been, he took our place. He gave himself. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. I'm going to get us this morning to remind ourselves of this great sacrifice. You took or were given, if you don't have one of these packets to celebrate the Lord's Supper, lift your hand, Paul will be there jolly on the spot. Here we need some up here, Paul. To serve you, in this packet you have a top layer, which is a wafer. You need to peel back the top and a wafer will be exposed. That wafer represents the body of Jesus, the bread. And Jesus willingly gave himself as a sacrifice. I want you to take this bread and we're gonna eat it together. And what it does, it reminds us of Jesus. Free choice to obey the Father, to come and be your sacrifice. See, he's redirected our life and we get to do a reset this morning. So take the bread and let's eat it together. Still further in this packet is another layer. And that layer, when peeled back, represents the blood of Jesus, simply the fruit of the vine, juice. When you drink it, it's going to remind you that Jesus blood was shed for the remission of your sins and he started you on a journey he arrested you but before he did all of that he forgave you and that is worth it's weight in gold if you put it that way so I want us to drink the cup together this morning as we remind ourselves of that wonderful work that Jesus has accomplished for us. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do that. Let's just thank him in this moment. So we get to remind ourselves on a New Year's Day when it's on a the Lord's Day of why we're here, what it's all about. It's a good time to kind of set our sails to what God has for us in 2023. I've asked Ann to come and she's got a I told her not, she's got 20 pages. I said, no, Ann, no, you can't do 20 pages. But she's going to share with us a little bit David's going to follow that up with some exer words of exer exhortation on, on where God is taking us. We've got to think about this down the road for 2023. 
We're in a journey, church. We're in a journey with Jesus. This isn't kind of floating the ocean blue here. This is purposeful journey with Jesus. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, I did actually have 20 pages, but you've learned to cut it down, you know. So you're not going to get the 20 pages. But as we were in worship, I'm going to even add a line because I feel the Lord wants to remind us. This last week, unexpectedly, somebody went to the hospital and they had a cold. They returned home and they just died. And this is someone related to people here in the church and the shock factor. You know, C.T. Studd, you may have not heard of him. He was in the 1800s, a very rich man, an English man. And he, he wrote these words, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I used to have that plaque on my bedroom wall. And he changed, he, get, he used his money, he went to Thailand in the mission, and he worked with Hudson Taylor, and he saved and brought many, many, many souls into the kingdom of God. He gave up his status. I just feel to add this this morning because this life that you have may be shorter than you think, and God wants you to redeem every day and know that every day needs to count for Jesus don't wait. But the word I have is a kind of a prophetic word, 2023. What's the Lord saying to our nation? What's the Lord saying to people? And what's the Lord saying to us? And I want to say right now, it's not just my word. This is a word other people are getting. And it's a confirmation. It's a new season. It's a new day for us as a nation and even individually there's this year is a divine turnaround and in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 23 we if you know the story the Israelites were in bondage and they were they were miserable they were unhappy they were in bondage they were slaves and the word right now is he's bringing you out he brought them out he's bringing you out we've been in a season of harshness and bondage and just just a hard season. How many of you have been in a hard last year, a hard season? It's been a struggle, but the word for this year is you're coming out of that season. It's gonna change right now. And not only coming out, but the rest of the verse says that he brought them out to bring them in. See, the Lord doesn't just bring you out of a difficult season and then just leave you sitting there saying, hey, I'm great, I'm out of the bad season. Now he's got something else for you to do. He's bringing you into something. And so you need to ask the Lord right now, where am I going this year personally? What is it you want me to do with this one life I've got? How can I get closer to you and, and bring in that glory and that anointing we sang about it? What is it in my life that needs to be different this year? Because this year is going to be a very critical year. And the year after that is going to depend on what you do this year. Good job. Just be open right now. Just open your spirit to what the Spirit of the Lord would be saying to your heart about positioning yourself in 2023. That's a good word. So what what is the Lord bringing us into? This is a year of transition. Major transition in the manifestation of the glory of God on the face of the earth. I was reminded of a song this morning. Many of us that are older know it. There's a powerful truth in it. It goes like this. Will you be poured out as wine upon the altar for me? Would you be broken as bread 
to feed the hungry would you be so one with me that I may do my perfect will my life to live my life to give I believe the transition that is happening that the Lord wants to happen what we're transitioning into is to become more one with him it's not about us it's never been about us it's always been about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten his only unique son that none should perish but that all should come to life that's what it's always been about and that's what it's always gonna be about when we stand in heaven and we worship God with his holy angels it's gonna be that one thing you know what the song of heaven is for God so loved the world the love of the Father I saw a vision this morning I don't see many visions but I know this was a vision from the Holy Spirit I saw an image of, image of Jesus stand behind, stand behind each one of us. And he was like a hologram. And he was standing with his hands out. And we were standing in him. Our hands were out placed upon his hands. saying come to me all that are weary and heavy laden I will give you rest and that rest is so much more of a rest of physical but it's a rest of the soul the soul the rest we have that he made the sacrifice for us that we now have rest we've entered into a Sabbath rest with our relationship our Father in heaven he said this year the transition don't hold in it's time to open your hands open hands to give out to give out to others to let me pour forth through you my love my life my healing my hope my restoration let me pour forth for you would you become so one with me that I may do my perfect will would you let me love others through you this is not a year of insulation. This is not a year of pulling back, pulling back. It's a year of engagement. For did I not change the atmosphere wherever I went, says Jesus. Where I went, I brought the atmosphere of heaven with me. And do you not know that I am in you? And wherever you go, you're bringing the very atmosphere of my Father's kingdom. This is not a year to hold back. It's a year to get in, to let me move through you. And he took me to the wedding of Cana for some reason. And it was the wine. We know the story. They always serve the best wine at the, at the beginning of the feast, right? Then when everybody had a lot to drink, they couldn't care less, and they served the, the inferior wine. But Jesus came, and he turned the water into wine, and it was excellent, excellent at the end of the feast. And this is a word for the older people in this house. How do I define older? I'm going to say above 45, okay? You young people got your whole life ahead of you yet. Should the Lord tarry. But those of us that have been on this earth for five decades, been walking with the Lord, he wanted us to know the new wine is still there. You still have effectiveness. Get up, get up, get up let me pour forth my new wine through you to the younger generation to teach them to be examples of how to live F 
fathers and mothers to be examples to the youngers of a godly mother and a godly father. Husbands and wives, be an example how to be men and women of integrity. Men and women that love each other as Christ loves you. Eric, it's not over. God has given you a gift to build houses. He's given you a gift to repair things in the natural. But there's an anointing upon you, brother, to bring a build into other people's lives, principles and integrity. He's pouring out, he's pouring out the new wine, new wine skins. We need to transition. The old ways aren't going to work anymore. The old ways are not going to work anymore. This is a new season. It's a new shift that's happening. He says, are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want it? Will you be willing to lay down your life? Will we be willing to lay down our life that people would see Jesus through us? And you say, I don't know how to, I can't figure it out. Don't worry, Jesus says, I've already got to figure it out. Just abide in me. Deeply root and ground your life in me. So our theme for 2023 as a people, quite simple but profound, yielding to Jesus, and we're all in. Do you own that? If so, put your hands together and tell the Lord. Come on. Tell the Lord you're all in for 2023. Awesome. This week normally is for us a week of shaping destiny for 20, for the upcoming year, and this year is 2023. On Saturday night and Sunday night, we're going to be uh, doing a prayer launch for this year, and we're encouraging you to be a part of that. And that would include a fasting opportunity for you. If you'd like to fast those days, that would be quite okay. In your program this morning, you have some guidelines for fasting. You've got some guidelines for prayer. And I would like to encourage you to be a part of the church's fasting and praying a launch. That is on Saturday night and Sunday night at 6 p.m. We're going to resume our uh, Bible research class on Wednesday. And that's at 6.30, so you can join us. We've got some exciting materials that we give out that help you in pursuing the Word of God. And then I'd like to remind you that later this month, actually, the, the 15th of um, this month, Jeff Eklund's going to be with us, our guest speaker from uh, Old Town, Idaho. He's going to have a word from the Lord for us. Actually, his wife, Robbie, will be joining him. You're going to be uh, very, very glad that you were a part of this. We're going to thank you for giving in 2022. We get now to shape our giving for 2023. So this is our first offering for this part of the year. And so I'm going to encourage you. We have ways that you can give. You can give your offerings in the reception box in the foyer. You can mail in your gifts. And you can also give online by texting or going to our website. Thank you for your giving. I'm going to share with you a timely word from God's word with you this morning. I've entitled this message, The Reason We're Here. You might be thinking about that, and uh, what I'd like to do is help you with that subject, if I can, this morning. Why are you here? So let's turn in God's Word 
to the book of Psalms, chapter 29, the first two verses, verse 1 and verse number 2. And here's what the writer says. I'm going to read to you out of the English Standard Version this morning. He said, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. It kind of summarizes what we've been experiencing and participating in this morning in our worship time. Some Christians, maybe you, claim worship is more than singing. Let me say, like making a meal, cleaning the car, helping a neighbor, are all acts of worship. Let me put it this way. When these acts are the outgrowth of our love for God and are done to demonstrate that love, they are, can I say it this way, worshipful. But let me go on. Technically, those acts are not worship. The very purpose of our existence, however, is to worship and to be worshipers. And I might say this morning, that is very, very important, that we grasp that, that we embrace that, and that we get our hearts around that, because you and I were created to be a worshiper of God. And um, while we do things and we express those as acts of worship, they may not actually be worship according to God's word. I want to explain that. If we want to accurately embrace that purpose, the purpose of worship, we need to use precise definitions. So let me give you this definition. Worship is the act of ascribing worth directly to God. Let me say it again. Worship is the act of ascribing worth directly to God. Worshipful acts may do so, and they, they do indirectly, but not directly. And I, I hope you can differentiate between the two. When the Bible commands and commends worship, as our highest expression, it's not talking about anything other than the direct, intentional, vertical outpouring of adoration. And while that does not have to be set to music, it does have to be direct. It's in its intention toward God. Psalms chapter 29, and the two verses we read defines worship with surgical precision. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. This idea is picked up and is brought forth clearly in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And again in Psalms chapter 96, to be specific. So worship involves the mind. Worship involves the emotions, our emotions, and will engage in whole person description of worth to the one who is worthy. So worship means that we're going to ascribe glory and honor to God. 
I'm going somewhere with this this morning, and I hope you'll stay with me. Nothing brings glory down in a church, in a gathering like this, as quickly and as powerfully as God's people unashamedly adoring God's Son, Jesus. When we worship Jesus, there's an anointing that begins to settle in on the house. This is not just for a few enthusiasts that sit on the front row. This is for every one of God's people to be fired up and not simply testimony to the personal benefits of believing the gospel, but being passionate about ascribing worth to the God of the Bible. The whole body of believers needs to engage. The whole body of believers worshiping with their whole being displaying the only thing that the church has to offer the world. That is honor being ascribed to the God of this universe. You should never be ashamed of your worship. You should never pull back in your worship. Because in so doing, that is by ascribing greatness to God, you demonstrate to the Lord the audience of one the value you put on him. Exodus chapter 33, verse 16 says this, is it not in going, or in that is, is it not in God's going with us so that we are distinct? This is the story or the meaning behind the children of Israel, which distinguished them from the other nations as they traversed the backside of the desert. And, and Moses says that this distinguished them from every other people on the face of the earth. That is the glory ascribing to God by the children of Israel. Worship leads to the manifest presence of God. And if you read that account in the book of Exodus, clearly you will see that God showed up not only once, not only twice, but on numerous occasions and demonstrated his power for his people. A few weeks back, I shared with you the difference between the omnipresence of God and the manifest presence of God. So listen to me. God's presence will be irresistibly attractive or shockingly offensive. There's no middle ground. Onlookers are not really responding to you or me. When people gather in this place as we do, We've come to bring honor and attention and glory to God and not to ourselves. That's our purpose, is to create an atmosphere of glorifying God. A biblical understanding of worship always involves the church, the corporate house. But remember, the church is comprised of individuals in the house. And if we, if we consider ourselves to be active in the house of the Lord, we complement each other as we contribute to the aspect of corporate worship in this place. We long to see God display his glory when we gather. So what I want you to do this morning, this first Sunday of 2023, I want you to consider how you worship. Because as we set our sails in this area and this journey as a people, we can't expect 
others to fully engage in ascribing worth to God if we're not prepared to doing so ourselves. This is especially true when it comes to training your children in worship. I love to see, don't you, little kids, hands lifted up and worshiping God with and alongside their parents. So make time to prepare your heart for worship this year. And pray for me, your pastor. Pray for the leaders of this house. Pray for this worship team who prepares themselves earnestly each and every week to lead us into the presence of God. Ask God to give you a fresh awareness of who he is, that you might ascribe to him even more the honor that he deserves. Fully expect to meet with one, with the one who is worthy when we come together in corporate worship. And I'm here to tell you, he won't disappoint you. I want to leave with you this morning a challenge, a 2023 challenge. And in your notes, you have it listed out, and then I've got a little segment in your notes section there is, what is your takeaway, or how are you going to apply this to your life? Let me give you these three aspects of a 2023 challenge, and this has to do with setting our sails as a people of worship. So number one, purpose in your heart to be a worshiper. I'm going to grind this out with you a little bit here this morning, so track with me. This involves a decision on your part an act of your will. You will be a worshiper. I will be a worshiper. So let's come to terms with this thought this morning that we individually choose to be a worshiper of God. That happens way before you gather here as a congregation. Today can be the beginning of an amazing journey for you in 2023 as you open your heart to be a worshiper of God. So purpose, can I say it that way? Purpose to be a worshiper. Choose to be a worshiper. May it be an act of your will. Somehow something has to go off in you right now in the moment that you're sitting in this house and you're saying to yourself, hmm, hmm, I thought that uh, I was a worshiper. But sometimes we drop in and we drop out of that responsibility. So I'm encouraging you to be a uh, purpose, to be a worshiper. And that doesn't only mean when we gather here on the Lord's Day, because a true worshiper is going to worship God 24-7 every day of the week. doesn't mean that uh, you're going to go through these little forms or acts of worship, but you're going to be in a worshipful mode. So when you get here, the decision you made to be a worshiper is only a follow-through of what you've chosen to do even in a gathering like this. Secondly, prepare your heart all week long for corporate worship so that when we gather together as the people of God, the full measure of God's anointing is going to rest upon you. It's already present. Effective corporate worship starts by individual worshipers gathering together. We together bring 
an element of worship that changes the corporate atmosphere. So what am I saying? Number one, choose to worship. Choose to be a worshiper. And the second thing, this is huge, that you get this, because if you don't, you miss, the, you miss what it's all about. You need to prepare your heart each and every day as a worshiper unto God. The third thing, and this is really pretty important, because uh, it's going to keep you in the saddle, so to speak, as a worshiper. Learn new biblical expressions of worship. David alluded to old people. He's really old. I'm glad he admitted that. <laughs> Having said that, there's a thing in the Bible, and you know what that is? It talks about, Jesus made it clear, about new wine and old wineskins. Can I explain that a little bit to you? The difference between new and old wineskins is that old wineskins have stretched their leather, and they, 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 they were made with leather, and they, they had stretched to their max. And when you put new wine, which has the capability of expanding, if you put that new wine in old wineskins, that expanding wine is going to burst the wineskin. And the wine spills out all over. Old wineskins represent old people, old ways, old thoughts. If you're going to if you're going to accommodate the new wine of God, the fresh move of God, you've got to recondition your wineskins and liken it to new wineskins so that whatever God does in a fresh way and it begins to expand, your life doesn't burst open. See, that's a problem with us. Some of us who've been in the church more than five years. We've gotten accustomed to the ways of God, and we become like old wineskins, and God wants to do a new and fresh thing. That's where we need to be very, very careful that we're able to expand with God. So, Part of that is learning new biblical expressions of worship. By the way, you have never yet discovered every aspect of worship that God has for us. None of us have. You could be a Christian. I've been a Christian for a thousand years. I still am discovering and learning new ways to worship God, new biblical ways to worship God. And I want to challenge you in 2023 to learn new biblical expressions of worship. Your worship needs to be fresh, and your worship needs to be real. Just for a minute, think about your eating habits. If all you ate were pizzas, pizzas for breakfast, pizzas for lunch, pizzas for dinner. You might like pizzas, but I'm here to tell you, after a while, this is going to get a little boring. After a few months, you're going to wonder if there's any other food on the planet that you can eat. How many know there are thousands of new recipes out there that you may never have yet tried? 
And that's the same thing with your worship. See, you've gotten into a little rut when it comes to worship. Can I tell you what a rut is? A rut is a grave with the ends knocked out. Graves are intended for dead people. God wants to keep you fresh in your worship. He doesn't want you to get in a rut when it comes to worship. So for some of you lifting your hands, maybe lifting two hands above your shoulders is a big deal. By the end of January, some of you are going to lift two hands way above your heads. That's going to be a stretch. Some of you are going to learn, according to the Bible, what it's like to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Some of you are going to learn to express your worship in the dance. Whoa, did somebody say dance? Well, read your Bible. Talks about dancing before the Lord, making a joyful noise honoring God in worship. So here's what I'd like you to do. Ask yourself, have I arrived in worship? And then ask God to help you to be creative in your worship unto the Lord. So that your worship is not boring and heartless. It's fresh and new and a new offering unto God. Every one of us needs to cultivate fresh, new offerings of worship to God. So I'm going to give you a little assignment here, is go through the book of Psalms. And David, who is the arch worshiper of the Bible, has penned most of the Psalms. These Psalms contain the heart and soul of our worship unto God. Church. Church. You want to be a worshiper. Choose. Make the decision. Leading up to learning new expressions of exalting God. Authentic worship begins with anticipation. You know, when I, when I, when I get here, you, you don't know this, but Sunday morning, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm here usually at 6.30 in the morning. You could be in bed still. I'm here. And I'm pacing around this place, and I'm, I'm anticipating what God wants to do in your heart and in your life. I'm hoping and I'm expecting that maybe you are anticipating something fresh from God when you walk through the doors of this building. You see, authentic worship means that we come in with an expectation and anticipation that God wants to do something not only in our lives individually, but in us corporately. How many could be a little excited if in the atmosphere of worship, the glory of God falls down? Now, we've had a measure of that this morning. And some people are set free and they are rid of their vices. God does amazing things in an atmosphere of worship. So prepare your hearts. 
I want to encourage you to prepare your your minds to worship God. Authentic worship is rooted not only in anticipation, but in ascription as well. That means worshiping God for who He is and what He does. Psalmist said, ascribe worship to the Lord. So I want to say, let's begin 2023 by turning the corner with our worship. Not only corporately, but how many can see that means individually? For some of you, when the worship service begins, that may mean leaving your seat and getting here near the front. I've, wor I, I, I've seen enough worship services where young people come and flood the room, flood the front part of the church just to worship and get closer to the worship team and the atmosphere of worship and not staying on the fringes, but all in when it comes to worship. It might mean leaving your seat and moving out. That might be one of the new ways that God may prod you into being an extreme worshiper of Him. You're not going to offend me if you dance before the Lord. You're not going to offend me if you clap before the Lord or if you shout before the Lord. God's looking for true worshipers. Those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. Do you know what that means? Spirit-filled worship is worshiping God as we sense the anointing of God falling on our hearts. Our spirits are united and connected with God who is the Spirit. That's worshiping God in spirit. Worshiping God in truth is worshiping Him according to the Bible. Because the scripture contains the elements of worship. And if you want to know what true, godly, heavenly worship looks like, read the Bible, particularly the Psalms. For it will unfold to you heartfelt worship give you a glimpse of what heavenly worship looks like. Come on, stand to your feet, your feet would you? This worship team has a worship song. They want to lead you in. Come on, move your hands just a little bit past your shoulders and get them up there. And let's exalt Jesus together.
church. Awesome. Awesome. Come on, church. So here's the deal. I want you, as you walk out of this place, three things. Choose to be a worshiper. You've already demonstrated some of that, but I want to see that in continuance. Number two, preparation, preparation, preparation. That means all week long, you're going to be engaged in worship. You're going to be listening to worship. Your heart's going to be in tune with worship songs. Worship songs aren't going to be foreign to you. You're going to know them before you get here. They're going to be all of what your life is all about. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Your home. If I show up into your house, you're listening to worship music, right? That's the way it is. And then finally, you're going to be so excited about worship. It's like my wife, who in her spare time likes to read cookbooks. All week long, you're going to learn new ways. But, but what, what, what's behind that? Of course, she just likes to cook different foods. You don't want the same old grilled cheese sandwich over and over and over. I mean, no, there's more to life than grilled cheese sandwiches. Church, come on. So you're going to be in God's Word, particularly the Psalms, learning new ways to exalt Jesus. Because worship's to you not going to be boring anymore. You're going to explore. Your mind's going to go every direction. Your heart's going to burst in the presence of God. When you do that individually, and your neighbor's done that, and your other neighbor's done that, can you believe that the walls are going to blow out of this place? Come on, let's close by applauding Jesus and honoring him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next corporate time together is Saturday. And I need to say this because you might be in a rut of your thinking. Remember what I told you our rut is? It's a grave with the ends knocked out. So don't go there. When we do this on Saturday, Saturday at 6 to be exact, we fill the room with worship. We get excited about Jesus. We engage in intensive spiritual warfare and we intercede on behalf of you can be a part of that Saturday at 6 o'clock, next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Because our prayer time is not just about beseeching God, it's about engaging the presence of God in worship, in intercession. So join us Saturday. God bless you. Have an amazing first week in 2023.